Luffy the Future Pirate King versus the Space Pirate Boros. What would happen if these two were to meet each other, and who would actually win if they fought? Let's find out. When it comes to Luffy scaling, there are multiple different ways you can go about it. For his multi-continental scaling, you can just scale him off of old Whitebeard showing during Marine Ford. Whitebeard has been stated in data books to not only be able to shake the world with his double fruit, but can also split the lands and the seas. And with what we've seen his double fruit actually do, it's safe to say that Whitebeard is multi-continental. And because Luffy in Gear 5 was stated to have surpassed Kaido, and Kaido was relative in strength to Whitebeard, this should put Luffy at multi-continental AP. As for the next scaling to go over, that would be Planetary Luffy. Not only did Sengoku flat out say that Whitebeard with his double fruit can destroy the entire planet, but with the data book statements I also mentioned earlier like how he can shake the entire planet and split the seas and the skies, you could also make an argument that these feats would be planetary as well, since he has the necessary force to do these things, and like Sengoku said, destroy the world. And because Luffy surpasses Kaido with gear 5 as I just said, Kaido and Whitebeard are relative to one another so you can just scale Luffy to this as well. Next up is the large planetary scaling and this is slightly different than the previous two I just mentioned. For those that don't know, the One Piece world has been shown and stated to be many times bigger than our own planet. With Alabasta, for example, having a river that was stated to be 30 miles long or 50 kilometers, which is a near accurate calculation of its size, along with the fact that there are around more than 100,000 islands within the One Piece world to up to 20 million islands, possibly even more depending on the translation that you use, along with the fact that the One Piece world has been calc to be around 2.7 times bigger than the Earth, it is safe to say that at the bare minimum, the One Piece world should be large planetary, and with the prior scaling I mentioned before, should also help scale Luffy to these ranges of power. And lastly for the final scale, star level. This scaling is the same as the previous one except it's being upscaled by quite a large margin. This is just basically a scaling saying that the One Piece world is just even bigger and has been calced by some people to be the size of a star. You could also take into account the One Piece world possibly being around 2.7 times bigger than the Earth, but I find this very unlikely to believe, and this will require so much evidence just to back up. But as I always say, I'll just leave this to you all in the comments down below. And to quickly recap Luffy's AP scaling, you can scale him to multi-continental at the lowest, all the way up to star level at the highest. And now that I've covered Luffy's AP, let's get into his speed next. Kizaru is one of the three navy admirals who possesses the glint glint fruit, and this fruit allows Kizaru to move and attack at the speed of light. For those of us that don't believe this to be true, Kizaru has been stated to have the emphasis of his double fruit be speed, and in his Viva card it's also been stated to manipulate light, is a light man who can turn his body and spam attacks at the speed of light, can create light bullets, shoot laser beams, and move at the speed of light. Not to mention that the pacifistas are cyborgs that also have the same powers as Kizaru's laser beams, which were stated to be direct replications of his ability. And Kuma's pad cannon, which was stated to be him repelling the air at light speeds, was getting dodged by a fatigue pre-time skip Zoro, which Luffy should be many, many times faster than by this point. And during the post-time skip on Sabaody, Luffy was again dodging laser beams from the pacifistas with no difficulty. And add on the fact that Luffy has become many times faster since post time skip Sabaody, then you can easily get Luffy into FTL to even FTL plus levels of speed. And for those that might ask why I'm primarily using pre time skip and feats specifically against light speed attacks, it's because this is the easiest and most direct way to scale Luffy to light speeds, especially since after these encounters, we don't actually see Luffy directly dealing with light based attacks at all. So that is why. And with Luffy's speed out of the way, Let's get into his hacks or abilities. To begin, Luffy has access to all forms of hockey. He can use armament and advanced armament hockey, which allows Luffy to both bypass durability and strengthen the durability of himself along with the strength of his attacks. Observation hockey, which allows you to sharpen all five senses, specifically your eyesight, and even read your opponent's movements. With advanced observation hockey, this allows you to see into the future as well and Conqueror's Hockey, which allows one to use their willpower to immediately incapacitate weaker opponents, and Advanced Conqueror's, which allows you to attack the opponent without actually touching them. And he has access to his gear transformations, but the specific one I want to talk about is his Gear 5 transformation. Gear 5 allows Luffy's imagination to really come through and just shine, because not only does Luffy's Gear 5 powers come from his imagination, but it's also limited to his imagination. 
Meaning that depending on the knowledge that Luffy has, he can actually do so much wacky and amazing stuff. It's really hard to deal with or even go into detail to, to be honest. Another thing to note is that when in Gear 5, Luffy can actually revive himself back to life. He was shown doing this against Kaido, but I do think this is limited to an extent. But we'll have to wait and see to find out more. And to conclude on Luffy's portion, he has AP ranging from multi-continental to star level at the absolute highest, and speeds ranging from FTL to FTL plus, and has a good base of just abilities and hacks. And now to talk about the man himself, Boros. Boros stated that he would be able to blow away the planet's surface. You can interpret this one of two ways. If you think Boros would have actually blown away the planet's surface in just that, then that would be multi-continental levels of AP, since he'd be affecting multiple continents across the entire planet. But if you believe that this would have blown away not only just the planet's surface, but the planet as well, then this would make this feat a planetary feat. You can also support planetary Boros with a statement that says how Boros has latent energy so powerful that he can blast away entire planets. So again, with him being able to blow away the planet's surface, which could have resulted in the planet itself being blown up, if you want to consider him being able to blast away entire planets with his latent energy, then you can argue planetary Boros. And lastly, there is star level Boros. And again, just like I said with star level Luffy, it is really shaky and you do need so much evidence just to try and prove it. But in the Blu-ray release of season one, there was a statement that said that Boros' collapsing star roaring cannon is so powerful that it can obliterate stars. The reason this isn't as valid in my opinion as multi-continental or planetary Boros is because this is a feat that we not only haven't seen Boros accomplish, but a feat that Saitama also hasn't accomplished as well. You could just argue this to be a hype statement to make his special move all the more dangerous or something, but this is also scaling that could be used for Boros. Again, you just have to have lots of evidence supporting it. And with all of this being covered, let's get into Boros' speed. Figuring out Boros' speed could be a bit complicated since he's only had one fight, but we can just scale him off of a holding back Saitama. But if we take into account Boros having his meteoric burst, which gives him an unquantifiable increase in his speed beyond his body's limits, along with the fact that Saitama is at the bare minimum FTL, even though he encounters Flashy Flash much later within the series, Flashy Flash who was stated and shown to move and attack faster than light, with Saitama casually reacting to and dodging his attacks, Saitama's speed during his fight with Boro should be at the very least relative to his later self as well, since in the official audiobook VGS or Virtual Genocide Simulations, his strength greatly surpasses the version of himself from the day yesterday, and he proceeds to one-shot a version of himself, like I just said, from yesterday. You can also argue two different interpretations of this scene, the first being that Saitama gets so much stronger every day that the version of himself a day ago just becomes completely inferior to him. Or two, the VGS couldn't actually gauge or measure Saitama's actual power and it was faulty. If we go with the first interpretation, it's likely that this would include Saitama's stats as a whole vastly increasing over the previous day's version of himself, meaning that we wouldn't be able to use my claim of his speed being relative. Or if we go with the second interpretation, then that means that Genosis' data on Saitama's ghost could have been incorrect and there could have been some sort of relativity between them in speed, but not necessarily strength. The second interpretation seems more likely as even from the scene prior, the machine was being faulty and created some unquantified power of Saitama that one punch dark shine. So I do lean more towards the second interpretation, but now that I've gone over Boros' speed, I'll talk about his hacks and abilities next. To start off, Boros has very great sensory abilities, being able to pretty accurately tell what Saitama was doing before he made it to his throne room. He can also regenerate and he can do it very frequently at that. He has various different transformations he can undergo, increasing his stats by a pretty good amount. He has access to his meteoric burst, which as I said, gives him an unquantifiable speed boost. And he has access to his special move, Collapsing Star Roaring Cannon, which can quote unquote obliterate stars. And with all of this being said, who would win between Luffy and Boros? I personally do think that this battle is pretty close and it could go either way, but I would have to give the edge to Luffy and I'll explain why. The highest valid scaling you could give to Boros would be planetary, but you could argue large planetary for Luffy being valid since the One Piece world has been stated and shown many times to be much larger than our own planet. And Luffy being at this level would give him better AP compared to Boros. 
But to talk about Planetary Luffy, he has access to every form of hockey, which gives him so many different unique advantages against Boros. He can increase his strength and durability with armament hockey, can hone all five of his senses and read his opponent's movements. He can also possibly use conquerors on Boros, depending on how you argue and if you think he is large planetary since he'd be stronger in AP, but Boros would be slower in speed. And Luffy also has all advanced forms of hockey, which lets him attack things from the inside, see the future, and can attack without actually touching you. And if we take into account Gear 5, it's just really, really bad for Boros, since his imagination is only limited to what he knows, and Luffy can do all sorts of things with his abilities in Gear 5. His Gear 5 was stated in Oda's concept notes to be able to make him stronger the more he laughs, which he does a lot. His body also adapts automatically, and this is supported with it saying that Kaido was surprised by its adaptation. He was also stated to be able to fight in ways that defy common sense, so there is also that as well. And he can also infuse things with rubber, and rubber is immune to blunt attacks, so Boros wouldn't really be able to damage him that easily. Now, if you do think that Boros' collapsing star roaring cannon can actually obliterate stars, then that would be above Luffy's pay grade, and I could possibly see that being an obstacle for him. But I don't really agree with star level Luffy or Boros, but if you'd like to use that, then go ahead. Overall, I do think this battle could go in Luffy's favor, especially if you go with large planetary Luffy, but I can see arguments being made for either side. If you have any thoughts or opinions, please let me know down below in the comments. Leave a like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.